Hi guys, BVG Hill here, and welcome back to what I'm telling you right now is going to be the last episode of Kentucky Route Zero. Last one. There's going to be two episodes coming out today. The one that you may have just watched before this that was like a million years long, and hopefully this one will not be a million years long as well, because we're on Act 3, which is the last act. And every other act in this game has only had five scenes. Oh, we're playing as this guy. He's only had five scenes, and this act has like five million. The stranger activates the tape player slung on his shoulder. A crackly drawl echoes in the room. It is patient and sounds like it should be smiling. My regrets. I hope I didn't keep you waiting long. We don't see a lot of foot traffic these days. I guess you hear about the job. I'm afraid we only have one opening at the moment. Horrible business. We're actually looking for some information. Ah, certainly. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I've only just met you, but I feel certain that's a there's a place for you here. I'll just take you over to meet the dispatcher, show you the trucks, get you familiarized. We can converse as we go. What is this place? Some kind of factory. Yeah, maybe, but for what? Why hidden away like this? And what's that smell? Like bread? Baking bread? Please, follow me. Okay. Alright, let's go. I have to ask you to step in here a moment. This is for your safety. And to adjust your outfits just a bit. There's some protective headwear on the wall back there. Please remove your shoes and glasses. eyeglasses. Uh, we don't wear glasses. So that won't be an issue. Well... Do us a favor and put on the headwear anyways. Just this way. So, these guys, their bones look very similar to, like, the bone on Conway's leg. Like, all flashy and such. Weird, man. Alright, let's go here. Wow, check this stuff out. It must be decades old, but it's in perfect condition. How do you think they keep it like that? Maintenance, old man. I bet it's someone's job around here. Probably hard to keep all the dust out, you know, underground. That's why I got into this business, to keep old stuff like this running. Seems like such a shame to let it all just fall into ruin, you know? Like the computer back in the cave, Zanadu. Decades of engineering, thousands of years of mathematics and philosophy, all petrified into living stone. How could you just let that fall apart? Whoa. Hello. This is Earl. He used to be a beekeeper. Borrowed some used casks to store the hives, but the interest accrued more quickly than the honey. Now he works for us here in logistics. Okay. Okay. Alright. Down the floor. In the shuttle. Alright. Here's the fleet. Haha. <laughs> oh, we just, we just use these to get around internally. How big is this place? Oh, it's grown a great deal over the years. Incredible to think, really. When Mr. Bishop founded this operation, it was only about 1,800 square feet, and half of that or more was occupied by camouflage to keep the law out. Hiding out in the back of an old church, purifying spirits by handmade fire, a kettle, and a dream. So, the trucks are just easterways in shipping. You can become acquainted with the dispatcher there. Give me a tap on the shoulder if you see something that catches your eye. Always happy to show off our facilities. Sublime machinery. Alright, let's go. Hop in the yellow cart. Because we all live in a yellow cart. Yeah. A yellow cart. Yeah. A yellow cart. Yeah. Put it on autopilot. Okay. We are now in shipping. Truck. Looks like your standard delivery truck. Here it is. Now, I have to ask, as a matter of course, what kind of experience do you have driving trucks? Uh, I used to drive long hauls. It's a lonely kind of thing, or so I hear. And you can drive safely, can't you? I haven't any doubt. Now, it's only after what happened with Miguel this evening. I've been driving all my life, for better or for worse. So is that all you must say? I like that. Never say more than you must. It's boastful and ugly. 
I do pity ill-fated Miguel. He was good company and slow to anger, but for speaking confidentially, well, with all that lost product to be repaid, bourbon and glass dashed across the interstate, and a few casks, too, we're all just thankful we had no... He had no next of kin. So, let's see if we can ring up the dispatcher. Okay. Starts the truck, switches on the CB radio. A deep, monotonous voice drones from the dashboard speaker. 1020 on that load, come back. Up in the Hummingbird Cave, 1012, city kid it. This is a good time, dispatch. We may have found Miguel's replace and thought you might like to get acquainted. 10-9, come again. Introduce yourself. Uh, pleased to meet you. Tell Dispatch something impressive about yourself. They're very well regarded here. Not really here for... 99 wheel holder, gotta pay the water bill. Ah, so I'm certain they'll call back before long. Let's take a look around the truck, eh? Dish class for the day to drive in the rain. It was pointless to stay. All review, he was a lost cause, and she didn't need it anyways. She was smart bored, it was time to cut out. Shitty day for it, though. 83 and biblical flood. Want to see a movie? With some anonymous swashbuckler film about real men and women, real tights, real lips, fake blood, they brought a flask. They smoked cigarettes, drank awful hooch, whistled buckets of rain. She sang about some someone she wanted to... She wanted once to have loved... Brown hair curled around her ear. She had a voice like scotch whiskey. Poured another drink. And another and another. She worried it was getting dark out. Then it was getting light out. They ended up in someone else's field. In someone else's car. An early morning joy rise and a sunrise collision. She got on the bus and he hiked back to his car. He sat in his car and went over some options. Chicago, Toronto, Barrow... Seemed like a bold and impulsive gesture at the time. As he pulled out of the parking lot, he removed his hands from the steering wheel for a moment and felt the, far, felt the car drift into a decision. Years later, he'd think of this as a moment he himself started drifting. Oh, I skipped that last one. Didn't mean to do that. Headlights work fine, see? Conway's now blind. My eyes! That's important. Most of our product goes out at night. You never know who you'll run into in the daylight. Dust can be treacherously misleading with all the that indirect light. The magic hour, eh? Magic hour, sure. The angle of the sun at dusk and dawn means the light is mostly indirect reflections from the sky. Everything looks like a movie. It's all a bit softer. Conway had to get off the highway. Too loud, too murky. He turned off into some gray cornfield in Indiana. Empties rattled under the passenger seat. He kept them over there so the smell wouldn't spread. That window was always open a crack. He had to pull over. He couldn't night drive in his condition. It wouldn't have been responsible. He was only human. He'd been out since the headlights were on. Didn't even stop for coffee. He cracked a beer at three. Eyes on the road. Half past four. Dodged some stray cattle. The headlights were coming back on. Rockford could wait. Early morning couldn't be much worse than late night. What could they care? He just needed a few hours. So, moving on. Tires. Oh, sure. I know you want to look. Kick the tires. That's the thing we do, isn't it? As though our knees could exert the kind of force that these tires see out there on the road. We're more likely to hurt ourselves, isn't it? The way, hey? Sure, they're big machines, but they can be fragile. Absolutely. A truck deserves care and fearful respect like a glass elephant. Miguel was a good driver, but he didn't have the quality of deference. Yeah, we're just going to keep going. Conway sat in a dim room full of folding chairs. The walls and ceiling were painted with old smoke. Someone read from the book. He drank coffee as it is. He listened. Speaker listed all the things we tried. That we, most people in the room, were probably there by court order. Ah, DUI. Few others shared. They spoke in abstractions like a program of action, a... Uh, Good orderly directions, spiritual but not religious, religious but not spiritual, all the things we tried. Then it was over. They clasped sweaty hands through a short prayer and stepped back out into the morning. Started walking. He was always walking these days. It was good to slow down. It felt clarifying, like a walking meditation. 
The road ran by a creek for a while. He took an unforeseen detour where the creek and road depart, parted following the edge of the water. He skipped a few stones alone, then stopped to consider an overturned boat. It was a kind of serenity that wandering and looking without purpose. He was coming to rely on those moments. Now, what else can we show you? The back. Looks like it's just about ready to go out. We have some good, strong folks in shipping here, so you never need to worry about loading if you don't want to, but a bit hard on the knees and back at our age, eh? Of course, you'll have to unlock, unload at the destination, but that's the job, and some drivers like the extra shift stacking and loading here. Shouldn't really do any lifting these days. I see. Well, surely we could spare a dolly and carrying strap for your health and safety. Conway woke up on a bailed hay. Everything was too bright. His head hurt. He's kind of doing a little jig. He's like, now, 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 now. Okay. Just outside the open barn door, he wanted Ira to take him inside and shower, have some coffee, get to the job. Ira said there wasn't time. Conway was in no condition. It was an important job. They couldn't put it off. Ira said to let the deadbeat sleep it off and then send him packing. He said Charlie could do the job. Conway stepped out of the barn, shielding his eyes. He tried to say something reassuring, but just sort of stumbled around it. Lizette looked away. Ira just spat and went inside to wake Charlie. Ira was a stubborn man, so Charlie went along. Conway drifted out again, and he didn't hear about the accident until months later. So, what's next? He's still doing his jig there. The truck's radio crackles back to life. Driver, come back. Ah, there's dispatch. Now, tell them about your experience. Tell them about the truck's in good shape. Tell them you'll start in the morning. Uh, I really can't. Yeah, we've got to finish this delivery in a few... 1033 dispatch. Got two black eyes and a flock of crocodiles. Come back. Back it down, pack. Prick your eyelids, driver. Come back, limp. 10-4. Come back, wheel holder. Um, 10-4. Got your ears on. Good. Listen to this. Silence. So, I think that went well. Let's head back up to logistics and seal the deal, eh? And I've got one more thing to show you. Okay. Hop into the yellow cart. Yellow carterine. Oh. Because we all live in a yellow carterine. Oh. Yellow carterino. Yellow cartery. Excuse me. This game is more like an audio book. <laughs> I feel like I spend the whole time reading. Let's head back upstairs, eh? I have one more thing to show you. Wait, wait. We only came here looking for some answers about the stupid moldy computer. Oh, the old man living in the cave with the moldy computer. That black mold. It's drawn to whiskey. Feeds on ethanol fumes, you see. As we age the whiskey, some of it inevitably evaporates into the air. The angel's share goes through the vents here and out into the caves. If we can scrape up that mold, we can usually apply some pressure and cold to it, squeeze and condense the angel's share back into drinkable whiskey. Every drop counts when you're making a living on the stuff, so we'd go down and scrape it off his equipment just like any other place it grows. He kept sending his people here to drive us away. Paranoid. Truly paranoid. Well, now we have the formula, so we don't need to go collecting mold. Since we stopped going down there, I'm sure the mold's gotten pretty thick. Try cleaning off the timing crystal. That'll get you going, I'm sure of it. So, join me upstairs? Sure. Way up. Okay. If you don't mind, please take off your safety shit. Because once you leave here, we don't care if a rock crushes your skull. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Oh, we're going up here? Up here. Let's go up here. Let's go up here. Can we go up here? Yeah. Adding machine. Here it is, a beauty, wouldn't you say? It's an antique, you know. What is it? Why, it's an adding machine. This is where we come for our daily ritual. To calculate the day's interest and repayment according to the formula. I usually do so at the beginning of my shift, so I know how many hours I need in order to keep up. Yes, I believe you'll do well here, sir. Happy to have you. Congratulations, you're hired. 
Wait, we can't... It's customary here to start each day with a shift drink. Let's make it special. Mark the occasion. This is the top shelf stuff now. Single barrel. He doesn't... Down the hatch. Venom Memorie Moors. I don't wanna. I guess I don't have a choice. Hey, Conway. You're gonna drift back into alcoholism, I guess. Decent enough. Welcome aboard. He's not working for you. We have to get back to this. Our... He has a delivery to make. What's this? Not working? Are you turning down this opportunity? She's right. I have to make this, uh... I'm disappointed, and I'm afraid that leaves us with a delicate problem. As I indicated, this is the top shelf stuff you're drinking now. It isn't cheap. If it's not your first shift drink, well... And there's the matter of this tour just now. My time and experience are billed at quite a premium. This is not good for you, my friend. You're in quite deep. By my back-of-the-envelope estimations, well, we have that in common, I suppose. All of us. Yes, I'm afraid you'll have to work this off somehow. It's just the way of it. What's happening right now? You can start tomorrow. Take the time to settle your affairs, of course. The interest begins to compound immediately and, well, we'll go over the formula when you get here. I should get back to work. See you tomorrow, then. You're ours forever. We own you. One of us. So, I guess I start in the morning. I guess. I'm confused. It's just the way these things go, kid. Huh. Well, it still gives us a few hours to roam, right? Where's the ferry? Uh, right here. Thought it kind of looked like a dock. Holy crap. Is that a mammoth? They're using a mammoth as a blow horn. I've officially seen everything. End of Act 3. And well, guys, that's all the game that's out. I don't know if they're planning on making an Act 4 or an Act 5, or if this is just the end of the game. Maybe they're planning on making a second one. I don't know, but I do know that Act 3 came out, like ages ago like I'm talking years so if they are planning on making more of this game I'm thinking it's probably a probably dead in the water so we got a big cliffhanger and I'm sorry if you guys were enjoying this and uh, you hate the fact that there's this big cliffhanger and no more game to play but maybe in the future there will be I enjoy this game I enjoy the story behind it because it's strange and unique very unique and it's, it's kind of interesting just to... It, it's like reading a story to you guys. And I hope you enjoy that. It's kind of like listening to an audiobook, really. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then please leave a like down below. And if you really like this video or this series in general, then please subscribe to the channel. Show some love. And leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought, what you like, what you didn't like, and any suggestions you might have for games you'd like to see me play in the future. And last but not least, if this video or this series just blew your mind, then most definitely be sure to share this video with your friends, your family, your loved ones, random people you meet on the street, whatever floats your boat, oh, on the street or the internet, sorry, whatever floats your boat, and I will see you in the next one. See you later.